set. Hi, welcome um, to Land and Learn, and my name is Mona Parekh. I am going to be talking about this really special pen. Now, I have two of them. One's an older version. It's called The Pulse. The other one's a newer one. It's Echo. Um, <coughs> and this company, Livescribe, you know, they, they have... Um, hi, welcome. They have <coughs> different kinds of pens out there, and you can definitely go on their website and see... Um, what your needs are and what you would like uh, if you want if this is something of an interest and it could help you in your class or or your students for that matter um, so I teach math in distance learning and um, it's kind of interesting because it's easy to answer questions face to face when students are in front of you but when students are sending you emails um, and saying I don't get this and can you explain this and I can definitely type it out or send my notes, which I'll show you how I used to do it, um, in an email, but it's still something is missing, especially in communications, especially when you're showing uh, thought processes of how to solve a particular problem or the algorithm, how it's been derived. And <coughs> this pen has saved me, I don't know how many ways, and I can't wait to share this with you because it really is exciting. It shared me, it saved me in um, snow days um, for students who have, you know, dis disabilities and who require your notes, um, and also for students who want to revisit your your lectures. And and I can't expect everyone to get it the first time. I certainly don't. If you put me in any particular class, I would like to. That's why we take notes. Is we like to revisit our work. Um, but what's interesting about this, uh, the dynamic of this, is not only do you get to see your written word, but you also get to hear what you're saying or anything around you is recording at the same time that you're writing. It becomes a very interactive and dynamic piece of technology. And it has been a wonderful experience, um, <laughs> and I'd like to share this with you. So, let's see if we can... Okay, um, here's a live scribe, and it's a very useful tool. This is a live scribe pen. Now, I told you there's several different models. This one is called the Pulse. They don't sell this one anymore. They've updated it to Echo, and they also have other versions out there, like the Sky Wi-Fi pen. <coughs> and um, this particular pen has some several things. You know, it has a head jack. You can listen privately. Um, you don't need any, no one around you needs to listen to your notes. Uh, it has a power button, which is located right up here. Uh, the display, the LED screen, a speaker, microphone, and there's a USB um, connector. And on the bottom, next to the removable ink cartridge, is an infrared camera. So it, it detects everything that you're writing on this special paper. And that's the hitch. You have to have the special dot paper for this pen to work. Regular notebook paper won't work. Um, <laughs> like I told you, this is a gift that constantly amazes me. It keeps on giving. It's, it's helped me so many times with students with disabilities, especially ones who are saying, hey, listen, can, you know, they um, saying, can I have your notes? So usually there's another student in the classroom who's willing to take notes and, and provide them that copy. And there's sometimes where, you know, it's nice to have the instructor's notes, but with this, they can revisit many times. Um, and all then, not only students with disabilities, but then every one of my students can revisit the lecture over and over and over again. Um, and so I call them my front row winners because the ones who are sitting in the front of the classroom are always the front row winners, right? Because they're listening, they're intent, they're paying attention, they're taking the best notes. But the ones in the back, sometimes, you know, distraction, whatever, <coughs> um, excuse me, they, some things get missed. But everybody is a front row winner when I upload these. Um, this kind of started out first with, you know, students who had disabilities, but then it kind of trickled down to snow days. Uh, there was one semester, <laughs> and this one too, where we've had a lot of snow days. And it can impact, especially um, when you're teaching like math, where everything is sequential. And, and you're missing days, and how are you going to cover all this material? 
because it's required anyway. It's part of the curriculum. There's no way a student can progress to the next math class without knowing this. And, and you're not doing justice by doing a quick, you know, segue in class saying, okay, this is 2.3, now we're on 2.4, and here's 2.5, and ta-da, we're done. You're doing three lectures in one lecture. It's really difficult. So this has saved me for snow days. There is no excuse whatsoever. I just sit at home or in my office, and I sit there, and I put the entire lecture up there for students to be able to um, go at their own pace. So if there's a snow day, all they need is internet access and the latest version of Adobe Reader. If they have those two things, they've got the lecture in front of them. And then after posting all these notes, I'm even getting some really great emails. Um, and <laughs> again, my communication with my students is through emails and also my telephone. I've uploaded um, Google and Google Voice on it. So they're calling me and texting me at the same time and it's easy for me to be able to communicate with them, especially with their particular questions. Now that's not these vague questions. I don't get chapter three. Okay, which part of chapter three don't you get? We had to narrow it down. Now I'm getting emails. I don't get 3.8. Can you be more specific in simple interest? Because I just don't seem to understand where I'm going wrong. Maybe it's a calculator issue. Maybe it's my understanding of how I'm inputting the information into the formula itself. <laughs> the questions are getting so much more particular and more efficient. I feel like they're, they're owning their, the knowledge more. They're owning the material more. And the communication is definitely better. So after snow days and after answering a bunch of emails, um, someone had said, hey, why don't you try to think about flipping? So I had some control issues about flipping. So once you start flipping some classes, you're really putting yourself really out there and hoping um, that students will do their due diligence and watch the video or watch the, the pencast and um, <coughs> come back to class prepared. And so I started with a few lectures. I didn't want to go all, put all my eggs in one basket. I didn't want to go all kit and caboodle everything. I, I did a few and I had a positive response. Um, and the, the response I got were, you know, better questions in class. And so we were doing harder problems than what I typically would give them on their homework assignment after a regular, you know, traditional lecture. We were getting deeper into the actual math topic, which is amazing because not only, you know, they're thinking, but it's critical thinking at this point. And the class becomes more engaged. Um, <coughs> So I've decided for one of my particular math classes, I flipped it completely. Your choice is to watch my pencast or watch my videos and come class prepared with few problems done and we'll do the rest of them in class. And it's worked out really great. So much so that I'm getting even higher test scores. So no longer, you know, there's wonderful pros about this pen. I can't speak highly enough about it. The best interactions with my students are in class now. I don't have to worry about snow days anymore and I'm getting terrific test scores. Um, so there, you know, there's a tablet out there, <laughs> and there's many versions, um, and I've had issues with stylus, and, and the good people here at Eagle Tech know me because I keep coming back and saying, do you have a different kind of you know, stylus, a different pen? And finally, um, I did find one, and we d I love it. Um, but I haven't found an app now that I absolutely love that does... Um, that writes as beautifully as I speak at the same time. So I'm not sure if it's not developed or I just haven't discovered it yet, but it's a, it's a progress, and I'll find it. I do have the pen, though, so if anybody wants a great pen, this is a place to come and get one. Uh, there is a cost comparison, obviously, with this LiveScribe pen and the different versions out there. You're looking to spend anywhere from $120 to $250, depending on which pen you buy. <coughs> And of course, you would need the special paper, which you know comes in, you know, as a four pack. Um, and here's the notebook right here, and I'd be happy to show you guys. It's special dot paper, and at the bottom they have these wonderful directions and where you stop, uh, pause, record, and you have complete control of what you write and 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 talk when you're writing your notes out. Um, so there there is a, an additional cost of this, and I went online and I looked this up. You're looking at a four pack of this kind of paper, and they come in 80 sheets per pack, uh, about $20. 
um, a three subject notebook like you would buy you know when you were in high school that's um, about eight dollars and ninety five cents but it goes a long way I mean once you start doing your notes you don't have to keep redoing the same ones over and over again unless you're answering students questions because obviously those are going to change and <laughs> I'll, sh I'll share those with you as well um, so this is how I use my live scribe I answer particular student emails and I can demonstrate how to solve particular math problems questions um, I post helpful quick lessons mini lessons just to answer you know a process rather than the entire lecture and I also post my notes which allowed me to flip my class and um, Laura and I found this video the other day and um, I would like to play for you because I think it's a good video How about live scribe <laughs> see if it comes there it is you guys see it oh it's not going yeah I did well, it's coming up on my computer, but it's not here, which is interesting. There we go. Yeah, it's not recognizing it. Might just be loading. Well, it doesn't load it from here, so we might have to go to. You know what we can do? I saved this. Remember we did it this way? Yeah. Maybe we'll just go this way. Yeah, and take it out of PowerPoint. Go ahead and click on someplace else or, or click on Internet Explorer if you want. Just close this. How about mm -hmm. that? Perfect. And then just go ahead and click on your Internet Explorer. That should do it. And that should get us right here. <laughs> Here it is. Yep, there you go. That ought to do it. Now we tested it yesterday, so should be. Yep, there it is. Ta-da! Yep. If you hit the bottom right, it will show the whole thing. Right part. here. There you go. Right there. Perfect. It'll show it full screen. Cold Saturday sandwich here. Sorry, it has an ad first. But yeah. <laughs> There we go. Lots of apps and programs have tried to offer their solutions for note taking, but the truth is nothing beats handwritten notes. So if you're one of those pen and paper kind of people, there's a solution that combines all the great things about analog notes with all the wonders of technology. The Echo Smart Pen is about to make your notes a whole lot better. Here's how it works. When you take notes using the Echo in this special 
Oh, you just want to go shopping at Kohl's. Yeah. Yeah. I want to get those. Uh, <laughs> <now>. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so like you saw in the video, it's really helpful. And if you go on the Last Scribe um, website and look at their store, there's other things ju other than notebooks. You can buy sticky pads. Um, you could buy flip notebooks. You could buy stuff with portfolios. I mean, there's a, really a lot out there. <laughs> um, you could even create, I saw one, you know, I shared this with, um, with my son's elementary school teacher back when <laughs> he was in first, second grade, and she bought one. Uh, she got a reading book, like an actual reading book, and she put like um, a sticky note. And all the kids have to do is have the pen and they press the button and the book reads. It, you hear her voice reading the entire page. It, was, it really was amazing how she translated it um, differently than I would do it. So let's see what we have here. If we go into Angel, I will share with you... Um, here we go. Here we go. <coughs> I will share with you how I um, post notes. And if you guys want to see it, I'd be happy to even demonstrate it for you as well. So if we go into this class here, <coughs> and we go in the Lessons tab, again, like I told you, I flipped this class so students um, can choose to watch videos who actually want to see problems worked out with me, physically, myself, um, you know, that's nice too. But here are the audio notes, and, you know, I also remind them that with my LiveSquare pen, you must have the latest version of Adobe Reader. Now, I've been using this for a while, and this semester I've only had one student who called, or she didn't call, she emailed me, I can't read your, I can't hear your pen cast, um, what am I doing wrong? And I said, well, do you have the latest version of Adobe Reader? And she didn't. <laughs> so we solved that problem. Um, so if we go to Chapter 2, I don't know, I'm just picking a Chapter 2 notes. This is what students will see on their side. And these are my notes for Chapter 2. These are just review exercises, you know, adding and subtracting, <laughs> dividing, um, finding factors, and the, there's the multiple pages. So if we look, this is page number 2, um, prime factorizations of numbers. And let's say, and here's another beauty of this, let's say you have a student who say, okay, well, I get this. I know how to do, if you go to the first page right here, I know how to divide. I know how to change a mixed number to an improper fraction. I know how to find my factors. I don't want to spend my time, because time is of the essence too, because we have a lot of students who have got jobs, families, and whatnot. I don't want to spend my time reviewing this information, because I know it. Can I go to something I don't know? Sure, let's continue. Let's go to the second page, which is right here. <laughs> I say, okay, well, um, I think I'd like to review how to find a prime factorization. All they have to do is take their um, their mouse and click. That's the answer number 16, a big whopper of a number, 420, right? What is 420? 420 is, well, <coughs> um, you can solve this in many different ways. And I have students who will say, well, I know two will go into it. Fantastic. Start with two. Two goes into 420 210 times. And you can just work your way down to the prime factors, prime numbers. You can pause it. They have um, some some wonderful things down here. They can pause it. They can stop it. They can fast forward. Uh, they can rewind it. They also have another button over here, which you can see this lecture already written out in grayed out, right? They can, you can, um, if you press this, the lecture disappears, and you'll see the problem being worked out as you would see in a classroom without the gray. I like the gray personally because then it shows, then they know what's coming next. And they can choose <coughs> if they want to listen to it or not. So I leave this I leave this clicked on so they can see, hey, the next one is talking about lowest terms. And the next one is, you know, here's another example of reducing in lowest terms. Um, <coughs> and let's say they understand how to get 420. They just want to see it written as an answer. They can take their mouse, stop it, 
or pause it, and they can click right here to the very bottom. Um, Turn back two times three. Seven is not, that's prime. Five is not, that's prime. Two is prime. So guess what? I'm super happy. Not as bad as yet. It will be in a minute. Um, I'm going to put this in the <laughs> order, which means I'm going to start with my smallest prime number first. So two, and there's two of them, so it's two to the second power times. And there's three, and there's five, and there's seven, and there we go. Two to the second power times three times five times seven. Voila! If you multiply those numbers, you will get 420. Voila! Right? I mean, this is pretty, pretty cool. Um, <coughs> and, you know, like I said, there's like three pages to this particular review lesson, and different ways on how to solve problems and I think students like this is because you know they're not taking up all their time and I think time is of the essence and I think that's why it's really helpful um, same way if I'm sending audio notes all I do is I click on my pen solve my problem <coughs> I mean we could do one right now if you guys want to see it in action I'd be happy to share that with you and I send it um, in angel like I'll just go straight to you know, right to my angel. Excuse me. There we go. <laughs> and and send him an answer. Go ahead, Mindy. Do you spend time on the first students' class actually teaching them how the technology works? Or is it pretty self, pretty intuitive for them? So I don't spend a few days. I just spend maybe five, ten minutes. And I show them. I demonstrate this in class. I'm like, this is how you do it. You need to have the latest version of Adobe Reader. And I show them that you can gray it out so you don't have to see the lecture. Um, <coughs> and again, it's like five, ten minutes. And I, I only got one student this semester who sent me an email saying, I can't get it. And it was because she, she thought she had the latest version of Adobe Reader. And it turns out she didn't. So it's not a whole lot. And, and then the beauty of this is um, the work is reproducible. Meaning, I don't have to recreate the same audio notes over and over again. Like chapter one notes is going to stay chapter one notes as long as the book stays the same. Right? Right? Um, the only thing that's different is like emails that I get. And, you know, I can share this with you right here. That <coughs> I, I bought the four pack and I dedicated one of my notebooks as answering students' questions. So I just come in here and I have a student... You know, um, Lisa, who was working in Module 6 and was having a hard time with functions. So I was able to draw out, you know, the X and Y axis and actual functions to say, is it a function? Is it not a function? I mean, this is kind of hard to explain in an email, typing it out. It's like reading, I don't know, how to change a tire. I wouldn't know how to do that. And here, you know, here's another particular student. Um, you know, here's a student who, she, you know, she took the module five test, um, and three times. And after the third time, it gets kind of depressing. It's like, what am I doing wrong? I don't get it. I did all the homework assignments. You can see it, and I can see it. And then I feel kind of bad. So I went back. I said, let me look at your test. <coughs> and I worked out the ones that she got wrong, just the ones that she got wrong. So when she retakes this test, the ones that she got wrong, she's not going to get them wrong again so long as she tries and attempts this, doing, watching the pen cast. And then and I, and I, at the end of this um, pen cast, I said, Hey, you know what? Now I want you to take out a sheet of paper and rework those problems all on your own. So you're seeing it twice. And then I want you to go take that test and tell me how you did. And I get the best texts ever. They're so happy. I can't tell you how happy these students are. Um, I have another one, Elaine, who gets everything in Chapter 3, but <coughs> struggled with 3.8. And she goes, can you just give me one example of each kind that I can experience in 3.8? Sure. Easy. I sat in my office. I mean, we were sitting in our office anyway, um, answering emails and whatnot. Why not do this? And ta-da, look at this. Three examples, one, two, and three. And then all I do is take my wonderful pen, and it comes with this USB cable. And it's really simple. Now, the, the sky, you don't have to. It's wireless. Um, <laughs> but all you do is clip it onto this. Take this and you just put it in and it automatically uploads your notes. And once it uploads your notes, you go to LiveScribe, pick out the pages you want. You don't want to send her the whole notebook. You pick out the pages that you want to send her and you save it <laughs> in a file. 
and then you open up Angel and you can upload your those particular pages. Now you can send it to an email. Um, if it's one to two pages, three pages tops, I can send an email. Anything longer, I've noticed that you can't send it through Angel. I'd have to go to, through a private email and then that would work. Um, so I go through the Kirkwood regular email and go to her private own email. Um, the other one was <coughs> sometimes I just post it into the lessons tab. So if it's too long and I don't have her private email, and sometimes that's happened, I post it into my lessons tab. Let me see if I even have one in here. Um, <coughs> I don't have one in here, but I could, but, and then everybody can benefit by it. Not only her, but every student in that classroom can benefit. I just sent an email. Hey, I had a student who had a question on 3.8. Just letting you know, FYI, I, it's out there and I want you guys to be aware of it. And all you have to do is click into the lessons tab. I want to share this. This is how I used to do it. I will never do this again. This is notes on, you know, chapter six, which is dealing with functions and function notation. And if you look at this, these are my actual handwritten notes which I used to, you know, have it lecture with my hand and I'm doing problems either on the board or over the um, document camera because we're teaching in distance learning. <coughs> and then I would post them. Um, and voila, these are all the examples. Does this represent a function? No. But how, if let's suppose you miss class, which happens for various reasons. Your child is sick. You have to go in because, you know, your boss told you have to come into work today because someone called in sick and you have to be there. Um, and they missed lecture. Well, they missed out on something really important because, you know, they have other obligations. And trying to make sense of this, it's not talking to you. There's nothing. Seriously, can you read this and, and say, okay, what does this mean? Is this a function? No. Well, why? Why is this not a function? This note is not talking to you. It's not making any sense whatsoever. But this is how I started. And then I was, I obviously was unhappy. Um, but this came to me as like a, as a Christmas gift, which is kind of funny, and it stayed in a drawer for a couple of years. I'm like, when am I going to use this? And then I got this job, and I'm thinking, I can't use this. Anyway, so I'm really happy, and my students love it. And if you want, I'd be happy to share. <laughs> no, I'm fine. Like, memory. This one's four gigabytes. This one is two gigabytes, but they don't sell the pulse anymore. Um, the Echo, they come in four gigabytes. Uh, they also sell it in two, and that's $120. The four gigabytes is about um, 200 And <laughs> there are other places where you can purchase it, and I'm sure they are cheaper, um, but not too much. I mean, you're not going to see that much of a difference in price. So you don't offload your stuff off the camera? It does. It comes straight into... Here, let me share this with you. Um, this is where I grab it. So this is my desktop. There's my live scribe, right? So all I do is simply click on this. And I love that sound. It makes me happy. That, Dixon Ticonderoga pencils and Goonies. I, seriously, who cannot love Goonies? That makes me happy. <laughs> Homemade popcorn too. Okay, so here, see, see, these are my notebooks that I made. Intro to math, PCM lectures, students question and A. And <laughs> if we click on this one, um, these are all my notes. And I can simply, and do you see how useful this is? I mean, I love it. Now, are those individual pages I'm looking at, or is number one a file with multiple, that might have multiple pages? There it is. Okay. Number one is page number one, and it was a student who says, can you please explain least common multiple to me? Because I keep mixing up, and I remember the student... <laughs> Um, she kept mixing up least common multiple with GCD, and quite reasonably so. They're both three-letter words, LCM, GCD, and there's two methods solving both of them. LCM has the listing method, prime factorization using the factor tree. GCD, you can do it the same way, but they're two different things, and it gets a little confusing. Um, and those are, you know, that page, and if we go back, if you click up here on the top, you get all your pages again, so... <laughs> Um, here's another, I don't know what this one is. This one's, compu oh, here's another one. Stephanie Jones, I felt bad because she was trying to take this test and she kept taking it over and over and over again. She couldn't understand why she was getting the same ones wrong all the time. I went over the ones and I sent her this wonderful live scribe, you know, notes, pen cast, and the next time she took it, she passed the test. 
I can't remember the score, but I know it was 80 or more, because that's mastery level at 80% or more. But this is really helpful. <laughs> and fairly simple to do. I'm not the most techie person, and I know that if I can do this, I know anybody else can do this. I mean, it's all you do is you just need a pen, and we just turn it on. There's the on button right here. And again, you know, it says it's starting. Now I named, you know, once you get your pen, you name it. You just take your pen cap off. Again, your infrared camera is at the bottom. There's your, your ink cartridge, which, by the way, you know, you have to replace them. But, you know, they're costing about $1.39, and they come, you, <laughs> they sell them in four or five packs, and they also sell them in colors. So you can get it in red, black, and blue. I don't have the colors, but one day I'll treat myself. Um, and all you do is you just open your notebook um, to a blank page <laughs> and solve whatever problem you want. So I'll just pick one. Here, I'll pick up this one, which is, so I just press, you see at the bottom where it says record, pause, and stop? I just hit record. Now, by the way, when I hit record, it's also going to record the surrounding sounds too. So if I'm doing this at home and my kids are in the background making